One, two, three, four, and five. Peter was authentic, and I couldn't relate what he was doing to anything I'd heard before. I heard a lot of stuff in there that was really different. And the songs I had, the kind of songs I had never really heard. He was very sensitive. He was very, uh, he was very loving. Uh, he was, he was my favorite person in the world. You know, while he was quiet and shy, he had a swagger about him that, um, I guess what I'm saying is he wasn't the soft, cuddly type. This Thanksgiving dinner that I keep alluding to, I don't remember any food ever getting cooked. So they start uh, passing around uh, marijuana, then they start smoking hash, taking speed. These big, flat sheets of black hash with these white streaks of uh, opium. It looked like, like chocolate bark that you buy at Fanny Farmer. Then they start shooting up something, you know, they're, and, and el dropping acid and, you know, everything, every kind of drug. You know, how high can you get? I mean, how high do you, do you need to be? He told me that he was the drug dealer to the stars. <laughs> oh, turned on. Well, my mother had called and said the FBI were here. And I told them that for months I've been telling you this guy's a drug dealer and you don't pay attention now. You're coming to me to look for him? Go find him yourself. It was uncomfortable for him to talk about them because he felt that he failed them. He felt that he abandoned them. And he did, actually. Well, I thought he was uh, going into a horrible, emotional, dangerous, frightening place. Everything was unraveling. He was always seesawing between this grandiose picture of himself and this I'm not worthy uh, self-doubt. It, it was always a dichotomy with him, always. I came into awareness knowing that a parent could abandon a child. He missed my mother terribly. Oh, the man is dead! Oh, he was in your head. The revolution's over.